In this video, you will learn how to work with page containers. When developing a website, we need to make sure that the elements are correctly aligned to the left and the right sides. And this all starts in the design phase, when the designer is going to define the grid to be used in the project. The most popular grid used in web design projects is the 12 column grid. So once these measurements are defined, this is what we are going to use for the page containers. And this has to be done for all screen dimensions. So let's go to Visual Studio Code so you learn how to work with page containers in your projects. In your CSS file right next to where you keep your global styles, let's create a new class called container. You can name this class anything you want, but container is a popular convention, so I suggest you use this name. Now let's go into apply the width for this container, which for the mobile version would be 92%. This is to make sure that the elements are not going to touch the edges of the screen. You can do this with paddings as well, but I prefer to use the 92% width. Now let's apply a margin of auto, this way, the container is always going to be centralized horizontally. And I also like to apply a height of 100%, so the container always grows with the parent element. Now, to see the container, let's apply a border. And now we can start using the container. If we create a new element for the container, we can now see the container showing on the page. And this is going to be what will ensure that everything on the page is aligned. But now, how do we use the container in practice? It would be nice if we had a background color for the top bar. So since the container is not covering 100% of the screen, what we're going to do is add the container inside other elements. So for example, we could have a header with the container inside. And now we can go ahead and add the background color to the header. So we have an element with a background taking 100% of the screen dimension and the content inside wrapped in a container. Now let's make some adjustments to the top bar. So inside here, I'm going to add a new section for the top bar. Let's add a logo and a menu. And going back to the CSS file, let's add the styles for this top bar. So it's going to have a height of 80 pixels and it is going to be aligned using Flexbox. So now this container is going to be what will align all the elements of the page. Now we need to make sure that this is responsive. So let's add the media queries for the container. So this one that we wrote at the top here is going to be the mobile one. For tablets, we're going to start at 576 pixels. Now for tablets, we can use a container with 540 pixels, which is the measurement used in Bootstrap. Now let's add a comment here. And let's add another breakpoint for desktop, which is going to be anything bigger than 1200 pixels. And the width for the container is going to be 1140, which is also the measurements used by Bootstrap. So for this simple project, I'm only going to have these three breakpoints. So mobile devices, that is everything up to 576 pixels, then tablet, that's everything between this value and 1200 and desktops are going to be anything above 1200. So we can save this now and we can resize the screen and we can see that now we are at the tablet version, then we are going to reach the desktop version. So now we have a responsive container that we can use throughout the page. For example, let's go to the HTML file and let's add a new element for the hero section. Now let's add another one for the hero content. Here we are going to have a title, a paragraph, 
and a button. Now let's add some styles to the hero section. And here we can use the container as well. Now let's just make a quick adjustment. So let's go to the hero and let's add some paddings at the top and bottom. Now we can remove the margin for the age one. And now we have this section with breathing space. So this was a quick tutorial on how to work with page containers. This is going to ensure that all the elements of your page will be aligned correctly. If we grow this a bit, we can see that these elements are always lined up in all screen dimensions. So now that we know what is going on, we can go ahead and remove the border and we can continue to develop this page. So when you start a new web design project, always create your containers first so you can use inside your HTML elements when you need it. So that was all for this video. I'll see you next time.